So hello, my colleagues, and uh, I hopefully you're well and uh, doing okay on this beautiful weekend, nice and dry. So I want to talk about the uh, statement of cash flows a little bit more now. And uh, the statement of cash flows, a lot of the information comes from the income statement, and uh, we'll see that in a little bit. And uh, we're going to see how to um, construct it. And uh, you'll see here that uh, we use a lot of the inputs as positive values, as we previously discussed, right? <clears throat> and uh, so we'll be going over this now. So I just want to show you, here's a typical uh, income statement, okay, for a Baker Corporation. And this is for year uh, 2019. And as we already discussed, the sales revenue is the, always on top. That's the money coming in, right? That's the sales revenue. And as a review, we subtract off the cost of goods sold. And that leaves us the uh, gross profits here. Let me get this out of the way. Hold on. How do we get this out of the way? I guess I can't. All right, but in any case, I'll I'll figure out how to get that out of the way. So we're left with the gross profits here, okay? And uh, then we got to start taking off the operating expenses, right? Here's the operating expenses. When you add up uh, these two items, and when you subtract this off of the gross profits, you're left with the otherwise known as EBIT, right? And then we have to subtract off uh, the interest on the uh, bonds, right? And that leaves us, so you can see we're starting to whittle down all our numbers, right? And then we got to pay our taxes, and that whittles us down right to the net profit after taxes. And this is pretty much the bottom line, except if we pay stock, preferred stock dividends, and then we're, then we're left with this as the bottom line, okay? So this is the earnings available for common stockholders. And uh, then they tell you, sometimes you'll see the common stock uh, dividends per share. And uh, and the, uh, the and here's the earnings per share, okay? So they're telling you how much they're, out of this that they're paying out in uh, dividends. So this is a, a basic uh, income statement, okay? And so here's the balance sheet, okay? And as I said, here's the... Uh, the stuff you can get rid of first, the most liquid items, cash and accounts receivable and inventories, and these add up to your total current assets, right? And then you have uh, land and buildings. I think there's a mistake here, right? If everyone carefully looks here, this says 1,057, and when I add 1,000 to that, I should get 2057 here. You see that right there? So this may be, we got that, and then we got this, and then we got this, and that should add up to this, and I'll highlight that. And I think we got a problem there, right? So, let me put a note. So, there's a little bit of a problem here, and I'll just do a freehand uh, type of thing here, right? And you can see this seems to have an error. And uh, let me see if I could... Uh, Should be two oh five seven point oh oh. All right, right. So that's right there. So all right. So all right. So anyway.
now I just got to. All right. So anyway, so getting back to this now. So here is the land and buildings. And so here's our total assets. Okay. Here's our total assets. So here's the gross fixed assets. Okay. And uh, so land and buildings was 1200 and machinery so these add up correctly right to 2500 and then you had accumulated depreciation which takes this down to 1200 so you see 2000 and 1200 it actually should it comes out to correct here everyone see it says 3257 and that is the correct answer okay now why is that doing that All right, so I don't know why that's there. Let me, uh, let me try that again. We got a little problem here now. Let me see what, maybe I could, the note says something there. This answer is correct all right so all right so here's the liability side of the balance sheet so I, I'm assuming everything is correct here right if you do the math you know please check the math here make sure everything is correct so all right so here's what we're looking for here's the statement of cash flows and as we discussed previously there are three components one is the cash flow from the operations of the company itself and here's the cash flow from your investments make that pink all right and here's the cash flow from financing so there's three components all right and you'll notice here and I, I gotta understand so you'll notice here from the operations okay um here's the net profit after taxes okay and uh that is basically um comes up to the very the bottom of the uh income statement you see that 237 let's go back uh, let's go back and there's that net profit after taxes okay so we got that there and here's depreciate now depreciation is going back on and we have the inventories increased you notice how these are positive right so we had a decrease in inventories which means we had more cash we had a decrease in accounts receivable remember we talked about that so that's positive and this is a non-cash charge and uh, we had an increase in accounts payable meaning we didn't pay our bills so we have uh, we have cash and we had to uh, pay some of our accruals so that's negative so this is the cash provided by operating activities okay now you will notice if i go back up here if there's no error up here again let me go back up from the income statement. There was a uh, preferred stock dividend here, okay, which I believe is thousands, right? Yeah, 10,000. Everyone see that? And this is a $7,000 preferred stock dividend. So that's, uh, I believe, $8,000. $8, so if you look down here, you will see minus 80, which is the, the stock paid. And again, that's minus 
80,000, right? So minus 80,000. And again, this was uh, 10,000. Uh, and this is uh, 70,000. Let's see what the little B stands for here. Hold on. Let's see what the B is saying. The firm's board decided to pay. Here you go. 70,000 in dividends to common shareholders. So dividends per share are 70,000. So we have 70,000 there. And then we have 10,000 up there for the preferred. And that gives us down here that $80,000. Okay. From financing. So we add we add up all these different components and come up with the cash provided by financing, and finally we add up uh, the cash from operating, the cash from investing, and the cash from financing, and we come up with a positive five hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. So that's good. So this is all positive, right? So we make that. That's good news. So we see we have we have a net increase in cash. So we have a positive cash flow which I wrote here because this was positive, right? Let me let me get rid of this. I got to get rid of this silly little thing here because this is in the way. All right, and I I don't know how to get rid of this on its own, so I got to get I got to pause this for a minute. All right, so th this is good news. I'm having a little technical difficulties here tonight with this thing. All right, so uh, so you start interpreting this uh, statement, and and again the operating cash flows um come from the normal operations, right? And uh, from, you know, selling all your, whatever you're selling, or your services, right? All right. And basically, um, we have to generate another number, and that's called, uh, because of a whole bunch of definitions of operating cash flow. So sometimes there's a thing called net operating profit after taxes. All right, so so how do we get the not the, the equation for net operating profit after taxes? We take EBIT off of the income statement and multiply it by one mi minus the tax rate, and that gives us no PAT. But again, if you want to get back to the operating cash flow, you take the no PAT and you just add the depreciation back on. All right, so there's two equations here you kind of have to know, and put them on your equation sheet, right? And I can't highlight those. So, so now we have um, what those two equations are for. And basically, we can take this, uh, if we want to solve for this here, we can take no pat and pop that in here. And then we end up with uh, this equation here. Okay, so that's another way of looking at things. So, all right, so let's go over. Uh, there's an example here. And they just show you how to calculate NOPAT, uh, operating cash flow, right? And All right, so there's a short little video we'll play here. Operating cash flow is a measure of how much cash a firm generates or how much cash a firm generates through normal business operations. Setting aside any effect has on cash financing strategy has on cash flow. Or simply, operating cash flow tends to quantify how much cash is been generated by producing and selling goods and services. Operating cash flow does not take into account whether the money to fund those operations comes from debt or equity. The equation for operating cash flow is that the operating cash flow starts with the operating cash before interest and taxes earnings before interest. Before interest, part of the equation, before interest, desire to ignore any effects of 
naturally, if it then borrows money naturally, it won't have to pay interest. And the interest that it brings to is will affect the taxes that it owes to the government. The taxes that that is not the focus of the operating cash flow measure. The focus of the operating cash flow measure. Therefore, the measure at a firm's earnings before interest and taxes, earnings multiply that times one minus that times the tax rate would be an after tax earnings measure or the net operating profits. Or the finally we add back depreciation. Finally, we recognize that all the depreciation expense shows up depreciation the deduction on the firm's income statement deduction on the firm's there was no actual cash outlay for depreciation. No cash outlay. Essentially, adding back depreciation in this equation, depreciation off the measure into a cash flow measure. Off the measure into a cash flow measure. The Banco Corporation earned three hundred seventy million dollars for interest and taxes. Given that Baker faces a twenty-one percent tax rate, twenty-one percent after-tax profits, ignoring interest expense and associated tax effects, are two hundred ninety-two thousand dollars, three hundred dollars, two thousand. Adding back the hundred thousand dollars depreciation deduction, yielding operating cash flow figure of three hundred ninety-two thousand, three hundred dollars, two thousand, three hundred dollars. All right, so that was worth watching. Okay, so uh, there's another term uh, that we have to learn here, and that's called free cash flow. And free cash flow is the amount of cash flow available to investors, which are the creditors and the stockholders, right? The creditors who are loaning you money and the bondholders and the shareholders, right? So actually creditors are bondholders too, right? After the firm has met all operating needs, and paid for investments in net fixed assets and net current assets. So after they pay that, whatever cash is free technically belongs to the uh, creditors and owners. Okay. Okay. So this is a, an important term, and we'll highlight this. Conceptually, free cash flow is the cash flow that firms can distribute to investors. All right, so there's always the question about Apple having a lot of cash, right? Free cash flow, tons of cash, and yet they don't increase their dividend, right? Or pay a special dividend. This is kind of what that's driving at, right? That's kind of what that's driving at, um, you know? And Costco always, Costco occasionally gives me a special dividend because they have a lot of free cash flow. Okay, so... That's that. Okay, so there's a little thing about ethically, um, you know, who who should get that money and, and the companies waste it, right? And you can see they're talking about surplus cash as dividends. So, you know, you should read these ethical things here. They're, they're important, okay? And how do we define free cash flow? It's the operating cash flow we calculated before, but yet we here we take off the net fixed assets and the net current assets investments, right? And that'll tell us how much cash we got floating around, all right? And equation five tells us our net fixed asset investment, okay, which is here. That comes to here. See this point, they're showing you how to get that. And here's an example of that. And the net change in current assets, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, here, they tell you how to get that here. So once you're able to calculate that and that, you should be able to calculate this. And, and if you know that, okay? So you got to calculate three equations to get your, uh, your basically your free cash flow, okay? If anybody has any questions, always email me, okay? So here's a nice equation. Here's a nice example you can go over and review this example. And if you have any questions, uh, get back to me. And again, here's LinkedIn with uh, their, their free cash flow. Okay. All right. So uh, I think this is a good spot to uh, knock off.